Recording is rolling. Today is Thursday, September 22nd, and that yeah, is Atwood Machine uh, Day. So this is going to be your, your lab setup. Right, you guys have a lab page in front of you that looks like this. Okay. I've been trying to switch over and have you guys uh, do more uh, tables by hand rather than just print stuff out, but yeah, today will be an exception. Right, so we've got a table for you guys. But this lab's a little bit different than uh, most of the conventional labs that we do for Reasons, but hey, right, uh, side of this thing. Oh, uh, oh, uh, actually, sp speaking of this page, uh, printed on the opposite side is the friction lab. We won't have time to do the friction lab this week, but I'll have you guys do that uh, this next week. So hang on to this page. Uh, I'm not actually going to pick this up from you today, but eventually next week I'll pick up this page and then I'll uh, put in the point of the gradebook for you guys. And right, so uh, just from a glance, you guys can see that this lab is going to be in two halves. Right? There's going to be the classic double elevator setup. And then there's going to be the modified setup where you have um, just one providing a weight and then one, well, also the weight can't out by the normal force because it's on a horizontal surface going on. Okay, so I showed you guys the free body diagrams for each of these uh, yesterday. And actually, if you continue from those PowerPoint slides, that, that's the beginning of a setup where you can eventually solve for the acceleration of the system uh, based on the input masses. Okay? Like you can swap out these masses, it's going to change the, uh, the, the motion. Okay? Now, if you want to be uh, technical about it, uh, more technically correct, you'd say, well, maybe the heavy one is accelerating down and the light one is accelerating upward. Right? Sometimes I just say the acceleration of the system, right? say uh, like the clockwise acceleration in this case, uh, something like that. Okay. I, uh, I did a demo this for you uh, the other day too. Right? Remember, you're going to have these pulleys. You have some string. You want to pop the string in this in this groove. It's a little, little tricky setup, but I think you guys can do that. You guys got a, a box of lab masses. And for the modified setup, ooh, see how I slipped a hot wheels car under there? You guys think you could, when we eventually get to that point, uh, take a lab mask to a hot wheels car, which remember the purpose of that is to get rid of the friction, which it's pretty good at doing. Gets rid of almost all the friction. Right? So there's no frictional force driving. All right, so uh, what, what's going on uh, with this table and what's the goal of this lab? What are you measuring? What are you calculating? What are you trying to figure out? And so let's go to, uh, it's table left to right, and I think this will make sense when I go through, uh, through this table. All right, so uh, let's see, we're going to do different trials, okay, different setups. Okay. Oh, G, hey, lowercase g. Uh, you guys know that's like 9.8 meters per second squared, right? Uh, I'm going to have you guys go ahead and measure everything in centimeters today, and the corresponding number for G would be 980 centimeters per second squared, right? Isn't that free fall gravity? Okay. And I just went ahead and copy pasted that number all the way down because we're all stuck at the surface of Earth. So that's just a constant. We're not really going to change that, right? Okay. All right. So we are in like some uh, some free fall uh, gravity field, right? which is that number. Okay. Uh, ooh, M1 and M2. You guys think you could uh, change out those masses as you go along? Okay. Do different combinations of masses? Okay. Now, technical note on that, that it's just going to help you out uh, in the lab. Uh, do you guys think if you, uh, here, what, what this is like 200 grams and 200 grams? What if you do, what if you take these two? Is there going to be any acceleration? No. Right. Um, it, it, and then the other extreme is what, what if you put all the mass on one side and you leave the other side just an empty string? That would be pure free fall gravity, right? Kind of help frame the problem a little bit. Right. Go back to this. What if it's like 200 grams, 200 grams, and then you take a little tiny mass and you hook it here? Do you think that it'll accelerate, but it'll accelerate very slowly? Right. And do you think if it accelerates really slowly, that'll be easier to time? Yeah, because getting the time with the stopwatch, you guys did bring your stopwatch today. You guys brought your cell phones, stopwatches? Uh, ooh, ooh, we got a traditional wristwatch. Ooh, uh, fancy, retro, retro fancy, different style. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if, if you can get these to accelerate slowly or maybe use a really long string, that'll help you out down the line. Okay, so you're going to record uh, what are the two masses, right? You can change out different com combinations of masses as you're going along, right? Now, these two columns, just go ahead and run with this. This will make sense in the end. Take the difference of the masses and the sum of the masses, okay? And notice I'm saying, oh, yeah. ah, is this right here? All right. Okay. Uh, you guys see absolute value? All right, so what it, the, you guys know absolute value just means you take the positive value of that, right? And the, the physics interpretation, is that uh, I don't really care so much if it's uh, accelerating clockwise or counterclockwise, right? I just care about the magnitude, right? right. Oh, now, why are you taking difference in sum? Uh, hang tight, I'll show you guys that in a few minutes. Right? X, 
in centimeters. That's going to be how far it moves. So if this thing starts from rest, okay, and you say, oh, maybe uh, if these exchange places, right? This one goes down a distance x, this one goes up a distance x. Go ahead and measure in centimeters, since that would be consistent with gravity field being 980 centimeters per second squared. Okay. Uh, a pretty good distance might be 100 centimeters. Doesn't have to be, but that's probably a pretty good scale, right? About 100 centimeters. Oh, T, how much time does that take? And notice I gave you guys boxes for to do three trials and take an average. You see that? Right. So remember, yeah, that's usually the, um, the the trickiest part of these labs. Like any labs that we do in class is figuring out exactly when to start and stop the stopwatch, especially if it's kind of like a second or a fraction of a second. Okay. So uh, if you do three, take an average, then you are getting rid of uh, a lot of random error, right? There's some random error associated Take the way you start to stop it. So do three and take an average. You guys get that? Okay. Now, let's think about what we've got so far. Um, you know you started from rest. You're going to know how far they go, x in centimeters, and how much time it takes, right? Hey, is that three kinematic values? Okay. Do you think you could use that to, uh, in principle, calculate the acceleration of the system? Right? You can. And this very last column, I'm saying to do exactly that. Acceleration is in centimeters per second squared, right? Oh, and really, if you take, um, let, let's go back a unit to kinematic motion. If you take this this first amigo right here and then rearrange it, I bet you can solve for acceleration uh, based on you know, starting from rest, how far it moves, and how much time. In fact, I did that for you, right? So I'm helping you guys out here. Say so I gave you guys an expression. Acceleration is two times how far it moves divided by the time squared, right? I'm, I'm sure you guys could figure that out yourselves too, right? But you guys can calculate what the acceleration is. Ah, hey, do you guys think that if you change out the masses, do different combinations of masses, that will result in different accelerations, right? In fact, we already set boundary conditions. We said, well, if they're the same mass, the acceleration should be zero. And if you put all the mass on one side, this number should be pretty well 980 centimeters per second squared, right? So those are like the boundary conditions, right? right. Hmm. What, what if it's like uh, 200 grams to 210 grams, something like that? Hmm, I wonder what that acceleration is going to be, right? Ah, and that is really the, the question in this lab. So see, below the table, there's a box. Right? And inside the box is A equals. Ah, like acceleration equals. What is acceleration as a function of the input masses? Right? And, and that's what it says here. So let's find a relationship among acceleration, free fall gravity, mass one and mass two, right? right? So that if the next class walks in and says, oh, I wonder how this works, you, you can hand them a formula, which would be the answer to this lab based on your empirical data. And you can say, oh, if you choose like 200 grams here, or 210 grams here, I can predict. You just plug it in my fancy fancy formula, and I can predict what your acceleration is going to be. Okay. Do you guys see also? Oh, uh, I, I meant to emphasize this point that acceleration is a bridge between last unit and this unit. Okay. Because acceleration, sure, it shows up in kinematic motion, acceleration all over the place. Right. We're using a modified version of this first formula, right? Starting from rest. Okay. Uh, but where else do you see acceleration? You also see it with Newton's second law of motion, right? Like dynamics. Ah, here's acceleration right here, F equals MA, right? So acceleration is a bridge between kinematics and dynamics, right? Uh, with kinematics, we were just looking at the motion things, right? This is the times, right? Like this, this whole lot of column calculation. And with dynamics, we're saying, well, what forces and masses are feeding into that that's causing that acceleration, right? Right for that, right? So uh, if you're everything right, uh, Oh, and, and then here's here's where the diff I said I was going to come back to the difference in the sum of the masses. Right? You guys see at the very bottom there are four starred columns: right? the free fall gravity, which is just can't really change that, You're stuck at the surface of Earth. Right? The difference of masses, the sum of the masses, and the ultimate ultimately what the acceleration is. Right? Uh, and here I'm giving you guys a huge hint here. There is some way that you can multiply and divide these first three columns so that it should land you pretty close to the acceleration value. Right. Now, this is just one way to go about figuring out what the acceleration is and put, piecing together this formula. Of course, when you make it formulaic, it's just you're not going to have any numbers. You're going to have you know M1, M2, and G somewhere down here, right? Right. Right. Um, and then see tomorrow, what I'm going to do is pull up those free body diagrams that I showed you guys yesterday, and I'm going to finish that as a solution and take you guys through the solution, like the textbook value uh, uh, way to get to the solution on paper. Right. And uh, if you do this right, then it should match your empirical solution, right? There's, again, there's some way you can multiply and divide these first three columns that it should land pretty close to what the true value of the acceleration is, okay?
And then ideally, if there was no friction and whatnot, which won't be exactly true, but pretty close. You guys got that? Okay. All right. Um, then for the modified Atwood, now I did show you guys the free body diagram. So you guys know that the weight of the one that's hanging is providing the external force driving the whole system to move. Right? The one up here has mass, um, which means it has inertia, which is, you know, the more massive this is, that's going to slow the system down. Right? In fact, that's a pretty good hint too, right? Here, here let's look at the blown up pictures. Do you guys think if you use a little tiny lab weight here and a big old mass here, that would slow down the acceleration, which is going to make it a lot easier to time, right? Right, you guys think? Right. Can you guys construct this, right? Put one of these big old lab masses on wheels. Right. Oh, do you guys think that the mass of the car is adding to the overall mass up here? Right. The mass of the car, uh, it's about 30, 35 grams. They're all a little bit different. There is a triple beam balance back there if you want to get it exactly, but uh, there you go. Right. Oh. All right, questions so far? All right, uh, last detail here. Uh, we, we have a time constraint, so there won't be enough time to do all of these, but if you keep pretty good pace, if you're pretty efficient, I bet you can do about three combinations of masses for the classic Atwood, and uh, you might be able to do two or three combinations with, for the uh, for the modified Atwood, okay? So that, that's your goal. See if you can do that by the end of class today, and then uh, by the time you come into class tomorrow, have these formulas written up, and then I will debrief this lab with you guys and then uh, do some other cleanup activities before you guys go into the weekend uh, tomorrow. Okay, all right, you guys set? All right, so everything you need is back on the lab tables and I will be walking around helping you guys out. So enjoy.